I'd like to introduce you to um, our guest this weekend from Big Finish. And uh, coming to the stage, we have Amy Pemberton, Tracy Child, Ken Bentley, and the wonderful Paul Sprague. Hey, let's practice it next to me. So we are Big Finish. Hands up if you've heard Big Finish before. Woo! Oh, good. Hands up, actually, I, sh I should have said, hands up if you don't know what Big Finish is. Oh, oh just the one? Fantastic. Well, Big Finish is an audio production company um, that does other things as well, but we're here because of the audio adventures of Doctor Who. And um, recently we have celebrated Doctor Who's 50th anniversary with a production Light at the end, which we're going to show you something on, or at least something on. Hands up, all of you heard Light at the end so far. Oh, actually, we're preaching to the converted. Oh, right, fair enough. Um, that one person, yeah, the whole panel is about that one person. You haven't. Is that on? Say hello, everyone. Amy, come on. Hello. Ball's back. It's okay. Oh, there we go. Hello. Well, I am on. I like that I'm getting applause for saying hello. <laughs> like this is a new thing for me. I'm on. Are you on? Oh, there we go. I'm on. Oh, on. Someone just oh. turned me on. So, so actually, while we're waiting, I love that we work in audio and we can't handle the sound of your microphone on. <laughs> to be fair, though, it's not that. So, perhaps um, each of you in turn can say a little bit about what work you do with Big Finish. So, Ken. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I direct plays. <laughs> Give some examples. <coughs> he directs them very well. He's directed me on many occasions. You're very kind. Um, uh, I've, done, I've, I've directed lots of Doctor Who. Um, I generally can't talk about the things I'm working on because I'm always working on them before they've been announced. Um, oh, at Sherlock Holmes, done a little bit of that. Thank you very much. We've just finished the first box set of the Avengers. Yeah. Uh, not the one we need to make actually. Uh, all sorts of things. Vienna. Anybody heard the pilots in Vienna? Yeah. Got the first box set of that coming out in the new year. Um, so lots of things. All sorts. Uh, I play mainly for Big Finish. Doctor Elizabeth Clay. Uh, who I have to say is huge fun to play, as you've probably gathered, because you've obviously heard quite a few of them. Uh, the most recent ones being the Union Dominion, uh, and then we've just done the trilogy of Persuasion, Starlight Robbery, and Daleks and Monsters. Um, I have, oh good, I haven't actually heard the final one yet. I obviously know what happens, because I was there when we recorded it, um, but I haven't actually heard it. I gather it's quite spectacular. Excellent, good. I'm looking forward to hearing it then. Um, so Big Finish are a great company for us to work for, because as actors you get to take your characters in all kinds of different directions. I also do some of the Sherlock Holmes um, for Big Finish, so I played uh, Mrs. Edgar Kerbishley in The Perfidious Mariner, and uh, I get to play her maybe again, or maybe not, I'm not going to tell you that, in a new upcoming Sherlock Holmes. Am I just leaving something away Is there? it on the website? I don't know. Yeah, I don't we've announced know. that. It's, it's on the website. It's on the website. It's on the website. Right, yeah. This weekend is mostly going to be people going, can I say that? Can I say that? Um, so, Tracy, uh, how did you find coming to fly? Because is that the sort of role you normally get? What, play Nazi time travelling astrophysicist? Yeah. Have you been yeah. offered that before? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of right where my um, typecasting goes, actually. Um, it was very funny because. I think we did the original Colvitz, what, 13 years ago? Yes, with some gauche yeah. adolescent uh, actor playing Yeah, what's his name? Whatever happened to him? David Tennant David or Tennant. something? Yeah. yeah, no idea. Playing a young lieutenant, or lieutenant as you'd say out here. Um, I have to say, Klein is a joy, because when I first played her in Colvitz, and there were no nice edges to this woman, and then years later, I got brought back from a competition, didn't I? Somebody voted for me as best baddie or something? Something like that. I think we, we did actually ask, what character would you like us to bring back? And you were overwhelmingly the, um, the choice. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, 
to come back then and start to flesh out the other parts of Elizabeth Clyde, so to speak, and find why she ended up being such a ruthless woman, uh, and to discover that maybe it wasn't all her fault and that there were other aspects to her, and that she had some humanity and compassion, in spite of herself sometimes, um, was really, really interesting. And there was the gorgeous moment, because I have to say, I love working with these guys so much, I never wanted to end. So at the point when we got to the end of the real Elizabeth Klein backstory, and there was a paradox, so they had to wipe her memory clean. There was a moment when I sat there and went, so now she can become a goodie and work for UNIT. There was this sort of pause, and somebody went, so you want to do more of them? <laughs> yes, please. Um, and lo and behold, here I am doing more UNIT. Um, so yeah, I, I have to say, Dr. Klein's been an absolute joy to play, and please may she continue for a long time. Excellent. Paul Spratt, explain yourself. <laughs> That's going to take a long time. Who, who listens to the um, to our podcasts? Oh, well, those people who don't, please not enough. Them, but they are funny. They're ridiculous. They're ridiculous, but they do give an insight into how shambolic he finished his run. Please know that most please know that most people living in the UK do not speak like Paul Spray. <laughs> So, oh, what are you looking forward to? <laughs> well done, Jason, a joke for four people. <laughs> um, yes, hello, I'm Paul Sprague. I play the fool, mainly. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm here because I'm your emergency Nicholas Briggs of the weekend. Uh, who, who sadly wasn't able to uh, head out here this year. For, for, which, for which he sends his apologies. But, uh, I'm sure he'll be back next year. But uh, yes, um, I sit in the office and um, do what David Richardson and Nick Briggs tell me to, which is um, oh, a whole variety of things, proofreading covers, uh, sending out scripts, dealing with all of the inquiries, um, organising the downloads, putting things on the website, taking things off the website, all manner of bits and How many, how many inquiries do you deal with, Paul? Oh, what the loads, Ken. Oh, you name it. People who've not got their release, people who have got their release, the thrills never end. <laughs> I should say at the moment we're slightly behind uh, because we have this thing called the 50th anniversary. You may have heard of it. Yeah. I've got to. And, um, this causes um, a to be out of the office quite a lot, and b to suddenly get an influx of a huge amount of uh, orders. So apologies, we are a little bit behind, but we are catching up. Yeah. We'll, we'll get there. We always get there. So. Anyway, enough of you. Uh, I say me. What, 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 what do you do? What do I do? I'm, I'm what do you boss. do? I've been wondering for years. Yes, I, uh, I'm the executive producer of Big Finish. And, uh, people come to me and say, I want to do this, this, and this. And I say, yes or no. How many series of Jacob and Life that's David got out of you know? I know, it's Blackman. I swear to God. Um, it really is Blackman. Um, but it's, uh, it's brilliant stuff. If you haven't heard Jacob and Life, go and have a listen. Yeah. It's brilliant. We're talking about two of the, the finest um, Shakespearean actors that Britain's produced over the last 50 years. And uh, the two of them together are hilariously funny and such wonderful characters. And, and um, do, we, do, we even did a, uh, an interview just with both of them talking about their backstory and about their lives. And it's fascinating to hear um, two men in their, well, they've got to be mid 80s now. Uh, no, I, I think Christopher might be a bit younger. Right, yes, I think he's a little bit younger. Um, who have uh, always, you know, 60, 60 years plus of theatre anyway and television and the history they have is amazing. Anyway, Amy. I'll just start listening to them. Yes. <laughs> Amy, tell, explain yourself. Okay, um, my name's Amy, I play Sally Morgan. <laughs> and um, I've worked with you guys for about five years now. And I just love going to, to be with them and work. I mean, I can't start to every single um, one that I've been in. Uh, short straw again, you see. Yeah. <laughs> I have actually directed Never. you once in an unbound. That's why Ken's directed every week since. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just, I mean, I, I love being on the, the stories. It's fantastic. I mean, Trace and I haven't managed to work together yet. We actually just met this weekend, so that's lovely to meet. We have this strange thing whereby we're both Sylvester's companions, and yes. therefore we have never met. So it could have been war last night, but actually it's going quite well so far. It's not how we went shopping in it. <laughs> so we're like that now. 
<laughs> so that's us, and understand we haven't got a huge amount of time today. So first of all, should we ask you for some questions? Who's got some questions? Ah, there's a question. Uh, obviously they've massively gone down. <laughs> um, no, they've done very well actually. Suddenly, um, what's hilarious is the still, uh, occasionally I do go on certain websites and have a look at the discussion boards, etc. There's still people out there who will not accept Paul McGowan as a real doctor. I know, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's complete denial. And, um, uh, but, you know, he's a wonderful doctor and if you haven't tried the Paul McGowan audio series yet, then do give them a go. Um, and they have been selling extremely well. Um, uh, the uh, funny thing is, that was the biggest secret we've had to keep since David became, uh, since David Tennant became Doctor Who. Because we found out quite early on that he was becoming Doctor Who, and we had to keep that secret. And this was similarly, because Paul actually asked us, should I do this? <laughs> so I was like, yes! Yeah, because he was like, oh, should, should, should. he just wants an opinion of whether that was a good idea. Yes, it is, yes, it is. Um, and obviously, he's brilliant in it. You know, he'll talk about it himself when he's here at 2 o'clock. Uh, please do come along and support Paul with that. And I'm sure he'll tell you lots of insights into that. Um, so I won't say anything more. But yes, it's been great. And, and also, um, I just love the fact, Stephen, I was talking to Stephen Moffat on the phone the other day. And um, he. Uh, he deliberately put in every single companion from McGann. <laughs> um, so that we could, uh, I take it everyone here has seen it, haven't they, the website? Yeah. yeah. No, well, the, 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 the reason that movie can have is are actually um, not owned by the BBC. Which is why we've never done them. So, much as, but we have worked obviously with EG and with, um, and with, uh, with uh, Daphne. Daphne, thank you. Yes. Um, because we, we love those people and they've come along and supported the finish and they've, they've done other work with us. Um, but yes, it's, it's great that Paul has had the chance to come back, be the Doctor again and get a regeneration story. It's quite small, but perfectly formed. Um, yes, question down there. She can't be a companion on the finish and I don't think she can be a companion on BBC either because um, the rights to the companion were set up in the movie, which they did, and um, it's, uh, it's a lot of legal work, and I'm uh, just not going to touch on that. I understand you probably can't talk much about the situation involving audio Okay, next question. But, <laughs> is there anything you can share with us regarding the situation involving audio <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't I believe they're already in the car, man. Oh, that's not nice. Um, Audio Go, um, we, we have a lot of friends who work for Audio Go. Yeah. Let's put it that way. They are in administration, they are being sold off their assets. Um, they no longer have any rights to any BBC product, um, which obviously includes Doctor Who, so that's all we're getting back. Um, there's going to be an announcement quite soon about us. What I will say to you is we're perfectly safe. We've been looked after, it's not a problem. So, you'll find out all the details of that very soon, but it's all, it's all sorted. Uh, no, no, it's, it's going to be a proper press announcement, but just in case anyone's worried, um, no, there's no problem at all with we'll the finish. Um, we'll, we'll be taken care of without any problems. And I'm enormously relieved to hear that. We are all enormously relieved to hear that. So all plus, plus also that we had to do some hurried work around to be able to release the time machine, didn't we? Because yeah, I mean, we, I, I talked to the, um, the head of BBC Worldwide, no less, um, to say, um, do you realise this is coming out for the anniversary, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, and we need to get this sorted now. Now, in the case of, I can say, in the case, without saying too much, in the case of the um, test of the Doctor, for example, um, it was a co-production, there was a clause within it which was put in, presumably more for their side rather than ours, which was if anyone goes into liquidation or administration, etc., the rights would revert to the other party, which is a standard contract term in most contracts. Um, so all the rights to the testing doctor came to us, so therefore I had to then say, can we now get this out? 
Um, and so technically, that's the first mass myth production we've ever done. Yeah, yeah. So you never know what might happen. Here's to many more. Here's to many more. Um, but there we go. Yes, some more questions. Yeah, we need a light one. Who's got a ah. lighter question? That was really boring. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Well, we're doing some things. Brad, explain the early adventures. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing that, that we didn't say at any point was that something is replacing the Companion Chronicles because that's, that's not the case. Um, Companion Chronicles are ending with Series 8, um, and um, we're basically starting a new range called the early adventures, which will be doing a similar kind of thing, but it's more of a full cast series than the Companion Chronicles ever was. So we're doing first and second Doctor stories in the early adventures, but they'll be using the companions and narration and to try and make it sound more like a full cast audio than we have previously. There are fewer of them as well. The first series is, is four stories long, and they're all double disc. But it mainly means that David Richardson will be fractionally less stressed. That'd be good. Because he goes around throwing chairs, he's yeah. around the head, that sort of thing. He's only producing or like producing about 500 times a week now, isn't he? Yeah, it's about more work. Uh, any more questions? Oh, hello. Is there any chance we'll be able to expand the modern doctrine for all? Is that always going to be expanding the genre? Well, the new series. You never know. You never know. I mean, it would be lovely if we could. Uh, and funny enough, one of these conventions years ago, a few years ago, someone came up to me and said, Why are you deliberately ignoring the most, you know, all the new doctors that come up? television. I said, on what basis do you think we don't want to do stories involving the most successful rebooted British television history? Um, you know, so it's, uh, yes, I mean, we would love to at some point, and we know we will see what happens in the future. Should we, should we do a quick role play? Pretend I'm someone from the BBC and you're you. Okay. Would you like, would you like to do some new series audios, Jason? Uh, yes. <laughs> That's how it will go. We will see. We will see. So, um, Amy, what have you got coming up with the finish? You've just been recording. I've just been recording um, Afterlife, which comes out very soon, but December. December yeah. the... Yes. I don't know. That's because we don't give it a date. I can't give it a date. I've got the files through, if that helps. Oh, OK, that's fine. Once I've built the download, you know, we're back home. Yeah. We can potentially release. Well, that's good. Let's do that. <laughs> so, in December, yeah, the last story I did was Afterlife. So, um, that's the next one. We'll which we'll features a certain character in Flashback. Who, who was, I'm, I'm going to do a bit of a spoiler, close your ears if you haven't heard. Who's heard God of, Gods and Monsters? Oh my god, there's quite a few of you behind them. Yeah, don't, don't, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. Listen, if you don't haven't, do Gods and Monsters won the, won the Doctor Who magazine award last year for best audio of the year, beating all the stuff from Audio Go, all the stuff from us, everything we've released. It was the, the best, sorry, the Union Dominion. Well, sorry. Um, but it is partially because I think everyone who's heard it, if you've heard the whole saga of Hex and so forth, and you get through to that point, I, uh, hands up who cried at the end. You cried. They, see, he's, a few of you, some of you are just too chicken to put your hands up. You're not prepared to be man enough to put your hands up. Stand up, sir. You were man enough to put your hand up and say you cried at the end. There you go. Good luck. There are at least five people who are looking really sheepish who really wanted to put their hands up. I can say, they're all over there. <laughs> so, so there we go, they got that. So, Tracy, what's coming up with you? Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. So, uh, that comes out new year? No, December. December. There we go. Perfect time for a Christmas present. Um, I've got and... the fast for that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say, it's a fantastic story because that one features interesting characters I the as well. So careful with spoilers. Okay, yes. moving on. Move um, on. But it's a great story, so um, yes, don't miss that. Excellent. What we're going to do is we're going to play you a little bit of light at the end, a little out of it. Um, I'm going to try and keep on their toes. I'm talking while seeing them do this. <laughs> so, um, so they're ready to go, because I think we've only, we've only got half an hour today, so um, come and see us. We're doing a signing at what time, folks? Three o'clock, come and see us. Come and talk to us in the um, in the, the room as well, where we'll be signing, and also we'll be selling good finish. Thank you.
crazy. Um, and we'd be delighted to chat to you at any other time. We've got a couple of other panels this weekend, so come and talk to us then. And uh, do we have, okay, I'm going to shut up now. How does this this? I want to expand a bit.